Okay, we're now going to look at MOS operation in the cutoff region and in the triode region. And the first thing that we have is uh, cutoff. And cutoff, we know, occurs when the gate to source voltage is less than the transistor's threshold voltage. And in this case, no current flows. And I should add a caveat that, of course, uh, this is not true for modern devices uh, where subthreshold current might flow. Uh, but we can say that the subthreshold current is very small. So we're going to treat it as near zero. Okay. If we take a voltage source and add it between the gate and the source of the transistor and make the voltage source greater than the threshold voltage, like so. What we'll start to do is accumulate electrons from the substrate that will move up from the substrate and accumulate under the gate electrode. And we're doing this because we're putting a positive charge in the gate that attracts this negative charge uh, directly on the other side of the insulator uh, to flow up. Now, once we have enough of these uh, uh, free carriers uh, in the channel, this is called inversion. The operation that inverts the channel is called accumulation. makes sense. We're accumulating free charge carriers in the channel of the transistor. Okay, now uh, that we have an inverted channel, if we were to put a positive electric field in the horizontal direction by putting a positive drain to source voltage, we're assuming that our source here is grounded just for ease of uh, calculation. So we put a VDS that's greater than zero, we're going to create a lateral electric field This is an E field. Okay. Now, in creating this lateral electric field, uh, we're going to uh, cause current to flow. Now we're assuming that the vertical electric field from the gate to the source uh, potential doesn't have any impact on this current. In small devices uh, that we make in present day, this is actually not true. Uh, and uh, there are uh, uh, secondary effects that we have to consider, but for this class we're only going to consider the primary effects. Okay, so we know that if we put an electric field uh, uh, here we're going to cause uh, charge carriers to move and that charge uh, carriers move uh, are th with a velocity that's proportional to the size of that electric field. So let's look at the actual analysis. Okay, so here is a picture of our transistor, and uh, we're going to start first by estimating the charge density in the channel, which we're going to call Q of Y, and this is going to be equal to the oxide capacitance per unit area times the gate to source voltage minus the threshold voltage minus the potential in the channel immediately below the gate uh, at any position Y. And we know that our current is proportional to the amount of charge in the channel. And we have to multiply this by the width of the channel. That's this dimension here. And we multiply that by the velocity in the channel.
The velocity is equal to the mobility of the charge carriers times the electric field. So expanding this all out, we get the following expression. And I should be writing these in DC values, so this should be capital D, capital S. Okay. Now, what we need to do is integrate along the length of the transistor. Okay, and if we were to carry these integrals out, we would find that the drain current is equal to mu times C ox times W over L times the quantity VGS minus VT times VDS minus VDS squared over 2, close parentheses. Okay, so this gives us a model of our drain current while the transistor is in the triode region. And in the next lesson, we're going to look at what the drain current looks like when we go beyond the triode region into saturation.